In this presentation, we're going to add loan payments using bank feeds. In other words, we're going to have payments that were processed through using the bank feeds that are decreasing the account related to loan payments that we are making. We're going to use those transactions from the bank feeds in order to create the transactions to create the financial statements in our accounting system. Here we go with zero. Here we are in our Triple G dashboard. We're going to start off by opening up our financial statements, our balance sheet first. Going to the accounting drop down, going on down to that balance sheet report. Once it opens up, we're going to be going up to the tab up top, right clicking on that tab up top, and we'll duplicate that tab. We don't really need our income statement now, so I'm just going to go back to the first tab and open that reconciliation tab, uh, reconciliation and reports by going to the accounting drop down and going down to the reports, the second item within that uh, accounting drop down. And then we're going to go to the accounting section down below and we're looking for the uh, bank reconciliation summary report. Then we'll right click on the tab up top. We're going to duplicate that tab. So we got our bank statement uh, and our, our bank, our balance sheet, our bank reconciliation, and then we'll enter data on the left. Let's go back to the balance sheet. Let's update the date on the balance sheet to the date we're working on. And that's going to be April 30th, April 30th, updating that report. Then we're going to go to our bank reconciliation. We're going to say that this is going to be the bank of uh, Chase is the bank. And the date will be in April. So we'll bring this on out to uh, April 30th. Update that report. Then I'm going to go back to the first tab. And we're going to go to the accounting drop down. Take a look at our bank accounts. So accounting drop down bank accounts. Then we have seven items that have not yet been reconciled. We're going to take a look at those seven items. And work with I believe two of them at this point. I'm going to hold down control, scroll up a little bit so we get to the zoom of the 125 so we can see it a little better. Then we're going to scroll on down and we want to pick up the items to Chase. Now these two items for Chase, uh, they cleared on the 25th and 28th are actually loan payments. So they're going to be loan payments that we're going to make on a loan. So if we have a loan payment, so for example, if we purchase something and we're financing it and we're taking a loan or we got a loan from the bank and we have to make the loan payments uh, in the future, then we have a question, a couple questions we have to deal with. One, how do we get the initial loan on the books? Because if I'm just using bank feeds and I look at my balance sheet, then I don't have a loan on the books yet. Why? Because the loan I took out sometime before, sometime prior to the point in time that I started using the bank feed. So I don't have any loan on the books yet because that was included basically in my beginning balance and cash at some point in the past. So one is the case, well, how do I put the loan on the books? And two, if you're dealing with most loans, then the payments are usually standardized and you would need to break out the interest in principle to record them properly uh, and, and record the interest component. To do that, you would need an amortization table. So the amortization table might look something like this. So in our case, we have the loan, 72,000 isn't on the books. And we're making these payments of the 1359, which we see two of them right now. However, there's a breakout between the interest and principal, so the, the portion of it that we should be uh, pulling out each time we make the transaction. Not only that, but the breakout between interest and principal will differ with each payment. So we cannot really just remember, there's a really kind of a problem with the bank feeds because I can't, even if I get this set up and I had was able to record two accounts at the same time, they're going to record it. I can't, you know, memorize the transaction because there's going to be a difference between the allocation of interest and principal, even though the payment will be the same. So the question is then, how can I do this as easily as possible? And this might be some method you want to work with. I would suggest working with your accounting firm uh, and CPA firm, possibly. One method you might say is, hey, look, I'm just going to record the payments here. I'm just going to record the payments and I'm going to record them to the loan, decreasing the loan. I'm not going to break out the interest. Uh, and the principal, I'm just going to take the whole thing and I'm going to record it to a decrease in the loan. And then I would like you, I'm going to give you the loan document at the end of the year, you accountant, CPA. I'm going to give you the, the loan document at the end of the year, tax preparer. And I'd like you to basically, you know, put the loan on the books, which would be a, an adjusting entry, which would increase the loan, a, a credit to the loan. And then uh, the, the debit then would have to be going to the equity account at this point in time, most likely, right? To put it on the books because it's something that happened prior to the point in time we started putting the bank feeds in, in this case. If it wasn't something prior, then it would possibly be on the books if we took the loan out uh, as, a, as, a, as a bank loan because we would have seen it go through the bank feeds and we would have had to increase the loan amount.
So in any case, we're basically going to say, I'm, you're going to have to make the amortization table to do that and then break out the interest in principle. So we'd like you to put the balance of the loan on the books according to our loan agreement and then break out the, the interest in principle. We're just going to be recording everything to the principal. So you'd need to work with an adjusting department if you're going to use basically this method, which will be the easiest method for the data input to reconcile and do the bank feeds and then will require an adjustment periodically at the end of the month or year breaking out the interest or principal. So that's what, what I would suggest or one method that, that might work to make the bank feeds as easy as possible. But like I said, you still need some kind of help, you know, or some other process other than the bank feeds to kind of to deal with that breakout. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to create this. And I'm just going to put this to a loan account, even though the loan isn't even on the books, right? It's not on the books yet. And we'll do that. At, we'll put the loan on the books and, and an adjusting entry with the help of the accountant possibly. And then we'll do a periodic adjustment for the interest in principle. That's how I would imagine or consider uh, breaking this out. So we're going to say the name then is going to be, and I'm going to have to add more detail. See, so I'm going to add more detail down here. And we're going to say then that I'll just copy the name. So I'll copy the name and that's going to be uh, the vendor. So it's going to go to the vendor and there's the date. It's not going to have an item. And then we need a liability account. So I'm going to go to some kind of liability account here. So I'm going to select the drop down and see if I could uh, find a good account number. These are expenses, assets, here are the liabilities. So there's no loan account that we have set up yet. So I'm going to say, let's make it a liability account. I'm going to make it a long, oh, we do have a notes payable. Here's the notes payable account. So I'm going to be putting it into the notes payable. Actually, this isn't the same note. So maybe I want to put another loan account that's going to be close to that one. So let's make it 2710. So 2710. I'm going to make it. I'm going to go back up top and I'm going to say this is going to be uh, the account of 2710. And it's going to be a, I'm going to make it a long term liability. I'm going to put all the notes into that long term liability. So not current liability. I'm going to say it's a note payable and I'm going to put like the last four digits of the account number I'm pretending here and then I'm going to say save so there we have that and there we have uh, that set up so I'm going to then say uh, save and uh, save transaction so we've actually have recorded the transaction and now I'm going to match it out so I'm going to match out that transaction and there we have that now the other ones are going to be the same if I update or refresh the screen up top, it'll probably give me a suggestion to be able to do that. So I'm going to say refresh up top and then it will refresh the screen. If I scroll back down, uh, it should give me an indication. Now it's saying, you know, we have this transaction. It's the same as the last one and it's giving us uh, uh, help with it. So it's not, this isn't a rule. It's a suggestion, but it looks good. And note, if you use this simplified method, then the data input will be really easy. You'll say, yep, that's what we want. I'm going to say, okay, then go to the balance sheet. What happens on the balance sheet? If I go back up top, update the balance sheet, then obviously it's coming out of the checking account. So we don't need to check that. It's, it's still a decrease to the checking account. We're making a payment on the loan. If I go down to the loan, notice it's down here as a negative liability. Why? Because this is a different loan up top. This loan down below is another loan that we had that isn't on the books. We made the payment on it, but we didn't put the loan on the books. And that means we're going we're gonna to ask her accountant basically for help at this point in time and say, hey, look, you know, we took this loan out before. You need to help us to put the loan on the books and they can do the, the transaction. And we want you to basically periodically, uh, we want you to make an amortization table if we don't have one based on our loan document information and periodically uh, make an adjusting entry at the end of the month or the year, breaking out the interest and in principal, which would then tie out the loan balance to, to this amount. How would that be done? You'd put the original loan on the books basically by, by debiting or crediting the loan for the 72,000 in this case and debiting, uh, the, the, probably the equity account retained earnings possibly because it's something that happened prior to this, uh, point in time of starting this information in zero. And then we would have to basically uh, make the adjustment to break out the interest, basically debiting the interest for, in this case, the two payments, the 596 and uh, then crediting. Uh, so we would debit and then we would credit the loan for the, the same amount, which would bring the loan balance to the 69,878. So we should, at the end of the day, be able to tie this to the 69,878 
uh, with those kind of adjusting entries. But the point is going forward for just the accounting side of things, for just the data input, taking this directly from the bank feeds, if you use that kind of adjustment method, you can always just say, hey, I'm just going to keep on posting this to the loan and then rely on a periodic adjusting entry to tie out to the amortization table, most likely with some help from an accounting firm, tax preparer, or CPA firm. So then if we go back up top and we take a look at the bank reconciliation, note that this 1666913 that's what's going to be this number once we update it and then we see that uh, the loan payments will disappear down here so let's update that and we're going to see that the bank balance then is going to be adjusted to that 166699 all these uh, are going to disappear once we complete this and there'll be no kind of reconciling items and then we're going to go to the uh, first tab and scroll back up top and then if we go into the bank statement information this is what we got from the bank feeds it was in there before but now we have reconciled the items related to chase so this items are now reconciled back up top in the account transactions we then have the account transactions that we have added related to chase and reconciled them at the same time that's it for now let's get out of here